Welcome again to Joe Stunner Boxing. Let's talk a bit about this great controversy um, regarding Alexander Usek's nether regions and Daniel Dubois' fist. Because a lot of people are saying it was a low blow. No, it wasn't. It clearly wasn't a low blow. Dubois was robbed. And okay. Now, if you've seen my um, post-fight review, you will know that I it looked like I said that it looked like a legitimate blow to me. Now, bear in mind that I did that um, video immediately after watching the fight, so ten minutes, if that, after doing the fight. And I do that deliberately with with review videos because I want to capture the sort of immediate my immediate thoughts rather than sort of looking at things uh, and, and sort of second you know rather than looking at things with a in the cold light of day and there's a lot to be said for doing that I want to give you my first impressions you know it in a sense it's a sort of reactionary thing I, I do all my review videos like that and I just it's a sort of stream of consciousness there's no real thought goes into it you know no, no I should say no real planning goes into it hopefully there's a bit of thought I hope so anyway um, and yeah when I did my review video I said it looked to me like it was legit. That was that was the impression I got. Now, this follow-up video, I have looked at it again numerous times. Um, I have listened to other people's videos, uh, listened to their thoughts, people who I respect. Um, two examples would be Outmatch Boxing and Chris Andre did very good videos on this. Um, and I think Outmatch flat out said he thought it was a legit, uh, a, a low blow. And Chris arrived at the same conclusion, but was perhaps a little less, um, a little less partisan. He was kind of giving both sides of the argument more or less. But I think he, he thought it was a, a low blow. Now, look, having looked at it again, I tend to agree that I'm sort of 60, 40, may, maybe even. 65 35 that it looked to me like a low blow why did i initially think it was legit well of course there's our old friend camera angles and camera angles can be deceptive i'm, I'm not watching the fight live i'm not the referee i'm not in the ring looking at it i'm not one of the judges sitting ringside i'm not up there in the gods watching it on a big screen probably above the ring uh, i'm watching it at home and you get that minute in between rounds, you get, well, actually, there was about four and a half minutes while Usek was preparing to uh, to resume battle, and the referee, uh, Mr. Pavon, was saying, oh, yeah, take more time if you need it, take more time. That was a, that was a little bit odd, but okay. Uh, I'm, I'm watching it at home, in the comfort of my home. And anything below the navel is an illegal blow. That's the general rule. Some smart-ass prick in one of my comments was like, yeah, you call yourself an expert, you don't even know that. Well, yeah, I do know that, you, you fool. You know, don't try and sound superior, right? I'm just a boxing fan. I'm not an expert. I'm a boxing fan with a, with a channel. And you can agree or disagree, but don't get all snotty, mate, because, you know, you ain't no great shakes. None of us are. We've all got flaws and we all just give opinions. And those opinions can be picked apart. So, yes, I do know that anything below the navel is considered a low blow. However... The referee frequently before the fight will indicate this is legal, this is illegal, this is legal, this is you know for both fighters, okay? And he didn't do that in this fight. As far as I as far as I know, I, I went back back and looked at it. It may have been said in the pre-fight instructions, but it's not. Um, it wasn't something that was said during the face the face-off just before the opening bell. Now. If you look at if you look at it from one angle, it does appear that the punch lands on the belt line, and that the belt line is more or less because it's not going to be perfect, but more or less level with the navel. However, if you look at another angle, it's quite clear that um, the belt certainly isn't above the navel. If, if anything, it's a little bit lower. Don't forget, we're, we're not talking about a belt; we're talking about a a big piece of fabric you know a 
very wide piece of, which I forget the word that, 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 that you might use, but it's a wide piece of fabric that can, you know, there's obviously wider than your navel and is going to either cover it and be slightly above it and slightly below it or one or the other. So yeah, different angles give different impressions. But if you look at the punch landing, first of all, you've got to, you've got to look at the Whichever still you look at is taken at a split second. Um, and it's two people who are in motion. So if you look at it, in, if you look at one of the stills, it looks as if the punch has landed with the, the, the knuckles pretty much above the illegal area. But if you look at it a split second later, it actually looks as if at least two or three of the knuckles have strayed low into the sort of bladder area. And even though I, I'm, I'm not dismissing those that, not completely dismissing those that say, I think it was a legitimate punch. I mean, I've certainly seen, you know, punches far worse than that allowed. I mean, the one that pops into my mind is when Amir Khan knocked out Zab Judah. That's just one, one example of one that happens to pop into my mind. You can think of many others. I mean, look at, Andre Ward and Kovalev, that's another one, the second fight. I mean, very dirty fight, lots of low blows from Ward. Probably deliberate as well. And he got away with it. Um, so yes, I understand the arguments. I understand the arguments here. But I just feel that if you put a gun to my head, and this is what it's all about, you know, okay, if you can see if you're weighing things up and you can see you can see a bit of this and a bit of that, what happens when you put a, when someone puts a gun to your head? And having reviewed it and having looked at the different angles and having um, watched it again and again until I'm blue in the face. I have to say, I think it was um, 65, 35, certainly 60, 40, that yeah, it probably was illegal, just about illegal. Um, because if you watch it in real time, that is obviously a very different thing to looking at stills. And again, those stills are taken, you know, as, as there are two, two fighters moving in motion, they are taken split seconds apart, and they can create a very different, uh, very different uh, narrative. Uh, if you look, if you depends which one you want to go with, and also there again, you, if you've got different angles, like there was one from the, the side where the punch, the hook landed, and there was one from the other side, the outer side. It's very difficult, but I think it probably was. I lean towards it now being an illegal blow. And therefore, I think the referee was right to call it um, an illegal blow. Now, let's move on to the question of did Usek milk it? Probably. Now, that's not to say he wasn't hurt. He clearly was hurt. I mean, his he was actually shaking. If you look at him, he, he, he looked like he was, it, there was some sort of involuntary tremor going through his hands, possibly his legs. Well, his legs looked paralyzed pretty much, actually. Maybe not his legs, but certainly his hands. I mean, he was... And the look on his face, I don't think he was not hurt. He actually managed to get to his feet after a minute or so. And then even then he was holding on to the rope. Now, is he faking it? Well, Don Charles and Frank Warren, uh, Don Charles flat out called Usek a cheat. He said that he cheated and it's a disgrace and so on and so forth. Uh, Frank Warren is pretty much the same, from the same, coming from the same area. Is milk in it? If it's, if it's genuinely an offence, is that cheating? Is exaggerating something cheating? I would say yes. I would say yes. Because on, on a football pitch, for example, if you take a dive in the penalty area, if there's some sort of contact and you deliberately go on the floor, I would say that's absolute cheating. And that's one of the reasons why I don't watch football anymore, because I just can't fucking stand, you know, these this all this diving, all this all these pussies throwing themselves all over the floor, I can't stomach it. Um, so is that is that a is that a valid comparison with this? Well, possibly, but there again, Usek is entitled to take five minutes if it's an illegal blow, and he might he might have needed those five minutes. He might be saying to himself, "Well, I'm going to take this five minutes because Christ, that hurt, and I'm going to make sure I'm absolutely okay." In fact. He didn't say that. He said at tw on two occasions to the referee, Louis Pavon, yeah, I'm okay, I'm all right now. And Pavon said, 
take more time, mate. You take more time. Which again, I, as I said a moment ago, as I said earlier, it's, it's a strange thing. I've not really seen that before. But the referee's saying to him, you're entitled to your five minutes. You know, don't worry about it. Take take as long as you like. Uh, within reason. Um, did he milk it? Possibly. But I don't think he's not entitled to do that. I think he is entitled to do that. So I don't condemn him for that. And also there's the thought that one punch in that particular fight, one, in, not one punch, but one incident in that fight didn't really define the whole fight, as a lot of people seem to be saying. I mean, let's say that that, let's say that was a legitimate blow. All right. It was ruled a legitimate blow. And Usyk managed to get up and hung on for dear life, even though he was in a lot of pain, and made it through to the end of the round. Is it a foregone conclusion that, well, A, would, would, he, would he have been stopped in that round? We don't know that for certain. And is it a foregone conclusion that he wouldn't have been able to come back? I would say absolutely not. I would say no, no, no. It's quite, quite feasible that he could have come back from that. Uh, but we'll never know. It's also possible, if it was deemed a, a legal blow, that Dubois could have won. But you can't hang everything on one incident, one, con one piece of controversy. I know people like controversy. I know that it's fun and it's more exciting and it's more sexy than simply saying, well, you know, yeah, OK, whatever. Referee's decision's final. No, people like their controversy. Um, because I remember watching it. I, I remember, you know, well, after it had finished, after the fight had finished and Dubois had been stopped, I was I was streaming it and there was a little chat thing going on. And immediately there was, oh, fix, robbery, robbery, fix, fix, robbery. I mean, why? You know, no explanation for those views. Just, no, 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 it's a complete fix. But people like that. This is the modern world. This is the internet age. I mean, we've always had stupid people. We've always had idiots in the world. But unfortunately, with the internet, they now have a, a voice that's on a par, if not louder, than with people who actually want to think logically and objectively. And again, I'm not saying I'm necessarily right. You know, I don't want this channel to be an echo chamber. I want to have debate. That's the whole point of the channel. So if you disagree with me, that's absolutely fine. Just don't be fucking rude, because I'm not rude to you. Um, but if you think differently, that's absolutely fine. And, and yes, there is there is an argument both ways. What's next? I don't see a, an appeal going anywhere with the WBA. Warren and Don Charles have talked about that. I don't see it. It's not going to happen. It, it, won't, it won't go anywhere. Um, Dubois, did he quit? I think that's, that never sounds kind to say someone quit, but I'm kind of lenient on people that quit. I do think he's sort of checked out, yeah. I think it, the, the going got tough and he, he couldn't get going or he couldn't hang with, with Usyk. Bear in mind, Dubois has never been 12 rounds. And yet he was supposed to go 12 rounds with an elite fighter, an absolutely elite fighter. And I think Dubois did a lot of good stuff in there. So if he's serious about carrying on boxing and, and making another run for the title, I think he can take a lot of pluses out of that. But he's got to show more gumption. He's got to show more determination, more fortitude, more, more good old-fashioned grit. He can't just carry on doing these things, you know, where if it, the moment it gets tough, um, it's all over. You know, I'm going to I'm going to check out. I don't think that. Nah, he, I don't know whether he can teach that. Dubois Dubois always seems like a big kid to me, and I think it's kind of a shame that he doesn't quite have say a bit of the Dillian White about him or the you know the Lennox Lewis or, or whatever whatever the Muhammad, Muhammad Ali. He does seem like I don't want to sound really rude, but I kind of wonder whether he's on the spectrum. You know. He does seem to be someone to whom boxing is something, is a thing that he can do. Uh, but it's a sport more than a sort of personal crusade. Um, even even in the ring after the fight, when he was saying I was robbed, I, I did, he didn't he didn't he sounded like he was reading that. He sounded like Frank Royal had whispered it in his ear, and he said, "Okay, I'll repeat that." Yeah, and of course he repeats it, and he, he sounds completely inauthentic, completely unconvincing. Uh, as for Usek, is he on the downside? Well, he's 36. Um, maybe he is on the downside, yeah. Um, he hadn't fought for 
a year. Almost a year. Maybe Fury will now step up to the plate and see him as beatable. So there are a few more miles on the clock, obviously. But don't write Usek off. Jesus Christ, don't do that. Um, I see I see Usyk as having plenty left, but he does not like it to the body. Clearly he doesn't. I mean, this goes way back to the amateurs when Paterbia hurt him to the body, and I think AJ popped him, got his attention with a body punch. I mean, look, no one likes getting hit by a fucking 17-stone man to the body, do they? But at the same time, there are ways of dealing with it. And it seems Usek gets very, very uncomfortable when you whack him to the ribs. Uh, so, yeah, let me know what you think. Any further thoughts, leave them down below. Uh, thank you, as always, for subscribing to this channel. I really do appreciate your time. Um, yeah, subscribe if you're new, hit the like button. Thoughts below and I'll answer them. And uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thanks a lot. Bye for now.